EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. There's a lot to look forward to in 2023, especially films. Out of the sea Wish I could be Since the beginning of time since the first little girl ever existed, there have been dolls. I don't believe in magic. But a few times in my life, I've seen things. Things I can't explain. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life. Part of that Clips there from The Little Mermaid, Barbie, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and The Whale. It's the start of a new year of film, and as the award season draws near, with buzz plenty, we're here to run down everything you need to know in the world of cinema. The ones to watch, what to take your kids to, and which to avoid altogether. Here with your definitive guide is Charlotte O'Sullivan, the chief film critic for The Evening Standard. Charlotte, we're only just into January, but there's already some exciting film releases this month, isn't there? Oh, yeah. So many great films this month. Um, Tar is my absolute favourite, which is out next week with Kate Blanchett. You want to dance the mask? You must service the composer. You've got to supplement yourself, your ego and, yes, your identity. It's about this beautiful, trendy conductor who just seems like God's gift, views herself as God's gift. And then we find out a bit more about her. And she's actually a real predator. She's not quite as bad as Harvey Weinstein. She's not a rapist, but she preys on young, beautiful musicians. She's gay and she likes the female musicians. And you're just introduced to her totally morally shady world and of course Blanchette just loves that sort of nuance and I don't even want to pin her down because the film she's she's not a monster but she's monstrous it's all about social media and the Me Too movement and cancel culture but it's not trying too hard to be modern so uh, director Todd Field just pulled it off so it, it feels sort of ahead of the game rather than a film that's trying to catch up I definitely recommend that one. What are some of the big standout releases for 2023? There are so many, so many. Michelle, I just don't know where to start. The one I'm most looking forward to is Barbie, Greta Gerwig's new movie. She's the director of Lady Bird. She also did Little Women. So she's an actress who turned to directing and she's a complete natural. And if Barbie's half as good as Lady Bird or Little Women... It's going to be wonderful. So it is a live action romp about Barbie and her lovely boyfriend, Ken. stars Margot Robbie as Barbie and Ryan Gosling as the very buff, possibly not the brightest Ken. And we meet all these alt Barbies. So it's a bit like, you know, the Spider-Verse where there are all the alternative Spider-Men. This is, we're going to be entering this, the Barbie verse. And you just read the cast list. Every wonderful actress uh, practically is in the list. And um, I just can't wait to see what Greta does with all these ideas. I'm very intrigued by Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So it's another indie movie with Harrison Ford, who I love. But the really interesting thing is that Phoebe Waller Bridge is going to be in it. She plays Indy's. Goddaughter, and it's just quite a weird move for her. You know, you watch the trailer, and it's just quite a weird sort of marriage. So I'm just wondering whether it's going to work. You sort of picturing the whole film, it's a bit like the equivalent of a car zooming across an abyss, and you're thinking, you know, will it reach the other side or will it crash to its doom? But I am hopeful. It's not Spielberg directing. It's someone called James Mangold. And he name-checked this wonderful Preston Sturges movie, The Lady Eve. It's one of my favourite movies. It stars Barbara Stanwyck. It's this really calculating, absolutely hilarious femme fatale. And James Mangold was saying that he based the Phoebe Waller-Bridge character on the Barbara Stanwyck character. So that, that makes me think maybe this all, it, maybe it could work. And maybe this is going to be a peach of a part for Waller Bridge. 
and launch her into sort of blockbusters, but on her own terms. How about less high profile films? Are there any which are getting some attention? Yeah, there's a lot of buzz about Blue Jean. It's a first film from Georgia Oakley, a British director. And it's also the first lead for Rosie McEwen, who's a wonderful actress who's done TV. She's done theatre, but this is her first lead role. And she's playing this semi-closeted PE teacher in Thatcher's Britain, whose life is thrown into confusion when she has a pupil come into her world and who wants to be more out and proud. And obviously the situation is much more serious for an adult who could lose her job if she comes out. Please, just tell us what you were doing in there, so I know. She's one of my students, she's on the team. What? Are, are no. you? No, of course not. So it's a really naughty film, just full of subtlety, very, very tense. There's not a sort of... Um, perfect happy ending as you can imagine but it's 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 not depressing either and McEwen is just so good it, it's lovely sort of Georgia Oakley and McEwen like they're in a way they're both first timers and they've sort of brought out the best in each other let's go to the ads stay there to hear which films are getting Oscar buzz and what you should take the kids to watch this year Welcome back. Charlotte, let's look at some films for families now. What should people be taking their kids to see this year? I think one that sounds absolutely gorgeous is Wonka. So it's an origin story for Willy Wonka and it stars Timothy Chalamet, who's just the best in sliced bread, obviously. And the film's made by the team who made Paddington. Is there, is there anything cosier in this world than Paddington? And now they've turned their attention to Wonka. It just sounds like a really, really good mix. And Sally Hawkins, who played Paddington's mum, is playing Wonka's mum. So, yeah, I'm just... Any children, any young children I know, I will be dragging them to see that because it just sounds so heartwarming. And Olivia Coleman's in it. We don't know what she's playing yet. But, you know, Timothy, Sally Hawkins, Olivia Coleman, how could it go wrong? Another great film that I think kids will love is The Little Mermaid. It's the first live action of a Disney classic since The Lion King. And it just sounds brilliant. Halle Bailey, this young actress, is going to be Ariel. There was a lot of attention went to the fact that she's not white. I, I don't know how this is a new story in 2023, but it still is, which is very depressing. But she looks like she's going to be a wonderful Ariel. And Melissa McCarthy is going to be Ursula. And yeah, I, I, I just i am very excited. There are also new songs, as well as the songs that we know and love. There are going to be new songs with lyrics from Lin-Manuel Miranda. So again, how can this fail? I, I'm, I'm just psyched about it. So award season is fast approaching. Which releases have the most buzz around them? Well, okay, you can't always listen to buzz because The Whale has had so much buzz and, oh, it's just such a mess, this movie. It's Darren Aronofsky, who's made many brilliant films in the past, but this is just morose, mawkish, so unsubtle. It stars Brendan Fraser as this gay teacher who reconnects with his estranged daughter. Every cliche is in there. Brendan Fraser's performance has got so much attention and he is a really, really good actor. But I feel that it's just a gimmick, the fact that he's in this fat suit. So it's really important in the story that he is overweight and there's this extraordinary fat suit that Aronofsky just sort of gloats over. It's like this, it's this toy that he's playing with and Brendan Fraser just happens to be inside the toy. So he doesn't get to, I think, show off what he really can do as an actor. He's just having to say these ridiculous lines and kind of waggle his eyebrows. But yes, that is going to get a lot of attention and he is going to be nominated for an Oscar. That is set in stone. The nominations haven't been announced for the Oscars, but that's going to happen. And yeah, it's, it, it, it is a low budget movie. So in that way, you know, I'm always happy for people to see non-blockbusters. But it is a shame that of all the films that get so much attention, The Whale is getting 
uh, such a big share of it. Do you think streamers will dominate again this year or do you think we could see a bit of a resurgence of cinema blockbusters? Well, Avatar 2 has changed the narrative, I think, because people do want to have a great experience in the cinema. Avatar 2 is still making money. It's just this week, it's made more than Top Gun Maverick, which in itself proves that people love going to the cinema. So when the ingredients are right, people will get off their bums. They will leave the sofa. This year, there's a new Scorsese movie and the money comes from Apple. So it will be streaming on Apple exclusively, but hopefully it will get a cinema release first. Because I think what people realised um, from Glass Onion, obviously it was made for Netflix, is that people will watch things at home, but other kinds of people who like going to the cinema are prepared to pay lots of money to see it in the cinema. So why give up that money? And Netflix actually admitted that they missed a trick by only having the film um, Glass Onion in cinemas for a week. So um, to get back to the Scorsese movie, I hope that gets more time in cinemas it just sounds absolutely brilliant. It's about murders which took place in the 1920s in Oklahoma. What happened was an indigenous American tribe discovered that there was oil under the land they'd been pushed onto. As it turned out, there was oil underneath. So now the Osage tribe were actually very wealthy. But it's like as a marginalised group, even when you win, you lose. Because what happened after that was the white communities in Oklahoma basically did everything to try and swindle the tribes out of the money. And it just sounds just the perfect story for Scorsese. He's always been interested in the sort of gangsterism of respectable America. But I, I just think it's great on so many levels because it will be Leonardo DiCaprio with Robert De Niro, you know, the muse from Scorsese's past, his current muse. And that's called Killers of the Flower Moon. And that's probably going to be the opening film at the Cannes Film Festival. I'm not exactly sure when it's coming out, but it will be sort of sometime around spring, summer. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back on Monday at 4pm. <laughs>